present in Canada. Um, I am Denisha Allen. I am originally from Jamaica. My journey to Canada was a little roundabout, um, about 16 or so years ago. My husband and I, we left from Jamaica and went to um, the States to be um, international students. Our hope was to stay there, but then there was an economic crisis. We went to do our masters and after graduating, we couldn't find jobs and we had nothing to lose. So we said, what about going to Canada? I should say that being in the States was completely, coming, coming to Canada was a completely different experience from what I experienced in, in the US. The US was quite tough, you know, but it really taught me, you know, resilience. I had to, as it, it was difficult to survive. You know, I had my son over there and we were, you know, extremely poor. I was on food stamps with my son, um, Jordan. He's now 13. Um, I went to ba the baby pantry to get food for him. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. So it was quite difficult. And then after leaving the States and coming to Canada, our story changed. Um, my son did not get new clothes until he was three. He was a year here in Canada. So I did struggle as an immigrant um, at first, but um, our story changed when I um, got a job at Walmart. <laughs> I was a manager there and then I got a, a job at the bank, two banks, and then now I'm here. Um, I'm not saying that I did not experience racism and, and tough times in Canada, but I have experienced worse. So I'm here in Canada and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. Is, is there anything that anybody could add? Can I, I can't hear. Hey, Kamisha, can you I hear me? Know. I can't he hear. Is doing it. I'm hearing you, but I don't know why the camera is not coming on. So I'm trying from another. Right. Laptop. And I wanted to share. Okay. So one of the things that so I coming, I remember my first my first day in Canada, you know, the, 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 the sky was bright. The, the, the grass was greener. It was just a new experience for us. Um, I remember having a difficult time, you know, paying rent. We did pay rent every single month. But I remember one distinct day when um, we, we were two dollars short on our rent. <laughs> uh, we were two dollars short and I remember looking everywhere and I looked in our car and underneath underneath the carpet was a two dollar coin. It was a two dollar coin and that's how we were able to pay our rent. Um, we worked hard and then in a year, I think it was a, two years, we were able to purchase a home. Um, I just love Canada because you know, you struggle, but at the same time, there's opportunity if you really work hard um, and stay positive. Wow. And, um, I don't know if you can see me. I'm going to talk, let Kimisha speak. Uh, Kimisha, we, can, we can't see you, but we can hear you. I just want <laughs> to jump in to try to be the middle person. Um, I don't know if you want to share a story. Yeah. Um, yes, I do. But let me try quickly from my other laptop before I give up on this one because I, I was prepared to be on camera. Um, where do I go now? Sorry, everyone. Technical difficulties. Things do happen, but we want to make sure that, um, you know, everyone's okay. ready to share their stories. I know Denisha can't hear me, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I guess I can probably, oh, you can hear now, Denisha? No, can't hear. Okay, I, I'm i gonna jump in while Kamisha tries her other um, computer. But, you know, my story coming in was a little different. Ah, because, I don't, Denisha, can you hear us now? I can hear. Yay. <laughs> I was like this whole time, I was just. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. No, I'm on your laptop, um, okay. but I heard some of your story. And it's like, I feel like we had a similar path, but my path was the path of being the kid in the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, when I came to Canada, it was 
A little bit of a shock, but not really, because by then I was 18. Mm. Yes, I was 18. And I've lived in my third country now. So I'm like, eh, oh well, you know, it just is what it is. And there was overt racism, but nothing that I would really pay attention to because like you said, you've had it worse. In the US, it's a whole different ball game. So what you have to offer here in terms of racism, I'll just get over it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to move on. We're just gonna move you on. You know, um, you see it and people are really polite about it, but you just move on because we don't have a choice. You know, it, it burns me sometimes when we hear people go, you're strong, but we've never been given the opportunity to be weak. weak. So we have always had to just be strong and mush on and do the things that we're supposed to do. And it just so happens that all three ladies on this panel right now are Jamaican. And there's something that is about when you are raised, I, it's probably similar for a lot of other places, but I can only speak from my experience, but nothing less than the best is expected of us. Yes. Nothing less. We are very competitive. We want, we are very proud people and we like to make an impact everywhere we go. So we know that everything we do, we have to just drive on and do the best that we can because we're not shaming our family and we are most certainly not shaming our country. No, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Absolutely, you nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna die. <laughs> no, we're gonna shine, right? And, I, and I, I'm sure that's what everybody else on, um, who's listening to um, can agree. Yes, if you have any questions for us too, please feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, I feel I feel Kamisha's dismay because her camera yes. is not cooperating. <laughs> Are you hearing me? <laughs> we can hear you though. I can, yeah, I have really? no idea what's going on. I tried I uh, Kamisha, several things, it's just not working today. So maybe I just have to talk. Say it again. Yes, yes. <laughs> please. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, Misha, I'm going to give you the floor. You go ahead and you share a story with you share your story with us. Yeah. Uh, so first off, it's 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 great to be here today to to share a little bit of my story with you. Um, I know the the topic here is uh, the black identity in as in Canada and my story as an immigrant. But the reality is that before I came here as an immigrant, like I, I had so many other titles, right? So I'm still, in a sense, trying to get used to the word immigrant in, refer, in, in referring to myself. Uh, I was, of course, I'm, of course, for, first and foremost, uh, uh, a woman, a daughter, a sister, aunt, adventurer, and I'm a public relations professional, which is something that I, I have enjoyed doing and immensely for the last 10 years or so. Um, uh, in regards to my story, if you can stop and think of a time when you fell in love, then you can encapsulate my journey here to Canada. It was like falling in love. I think Danisha said earlier about the grass being greener. I joke about it all the time <laughs> that people say the grass isn't greener on the other side, but I feel like the grass is greener in Canada, literally. I, I remember when I came here, uh, there was one summer day and it just, the grass was just so green and the color was so bright. And when the sun came out, it was like, glorious it was amazing it was just really beautiful and um i was i was i was on the highway driving uh going somewhere and i remember looking out and i'm saying is this really going to work because this place looks so daunting of course we have our highways in jamaica but when you think about the canadian system it's totally different so i kind of felt intimidated too you know so that that falling in love feeling where you know you get the butterflies you're excited you want to do all these amazing things but then you're uncertain and then all of a sudden that maybe in quotations it, it becomes yes you're I, I was just swept away with everything because i love traveling i love adventures and while a lot of people raise their eyebrow and i tell them that's one of the reasons i came to canada it is because there's canada is huge there are so many other things to do without having to leave the country so it's it's been quite an incredible journey. And um, I, if I were to pick three words to sum it up, I would pick curiosity, courage, and commitment. And there are so many stories that take me across all three words. 
uh, first off, first off, curiosity is what led to the start of the journey to me coming here in the first place because I love traveling, I love meeting people, I'm really passionate about that, and uh, I, I I want to be successful. I want to do so many other things. So it's that curiosity that really led me to want to be here in the first place and to go out despite the odds, despite seeing where, in a sense, you could be at a disadvantage for so many so many things. Uh, I, uh, it, it's, keep, it's kept me going, even in times when maybe I said, okay, you know what, I, I give up and could feel like I need to throw in the towel. That, that curiosity is what led me to what I call telling myself a better lie. Because before I came here, I had, I, I had the opportunity to come in winter and I actually came, I think at the start of spring. Uh, and I heard so many horror stories about winter, like, oh, the place is crazy. You're not going to want to go out <laughs> yeah, for the entire season. <laughs> and I hate being cold. I, I, I just don't like being cold. And that, that has always been an issue for me. Even in Jamaica, being uh, in the AC, in the office, I used to always have my sweaters. But guess what? I told myself a better lie. I remember I had a notebook when it came around to winter. And in, my, in that notebook, I used to write all these amazing words that... I used to refer to winter. So I said, winter is going to be amazing, spectacular. It's going to be a winter wonderland. It's going to be a challenge. And then I put in bracket. by the way, I love a challenge. <laughs> so I had all of these things packed up and that's what really helped to keep, keep me going. And now I'm going to move on to my, my second C, which is courage. Now I told you about the amazing part about the falling in love and the yes, the maybe becoming yes, but courage. It has taken me immense courage to be here, uh, looking forward to my third anniversary. And uh, I say that too, because two specific scenarios that really jolted me out of that trance, out of that euphoria of living in Canada were house hunting and job hunting. I remember the one, one when I came here, like within a month, uh, I was trying to find a new place to to live. I was staying with my brother at the time and we were calling around several places. Some of them were just too expensive, ridiculous. They didn't look good or whatever. But then I found these amazing pictures on, what's the website what's the thing called? Kijiji? Yes. <laughs> that a Canadian yes. No Kijiji. So I found these amazing pictures and I'm saying, yeah, this looks like the place. So I called and uh, it was like 10 minutes from where we were. And they say, yeah, we, yeah, the place is available. You can come and look at it. And by the time we drove there and I came out of the car with my, my mom and my brother and we walk up, walked up to the house and they said, oh, it's no longer available. I'm sorry. We, we made a mistake. And I'm saying what that was like less than 10 minutes ago. We left to come here. So if it was available, then then what could have been the issue? No, and they insisted that it wasn't available because, of course, we didn't look like them. And maybe they thought differently when they heard the call on the phone. So that was a wake up call. And that actually, it's funny, I should say wake up call because it kept me awake <laughs> for many nights after that. Just to think that I'm, I'm going to be paying you my money, but because I look different, you're going to not rent me the place because of that. So that was a wake up call within the first month. And then after that, it was the job hunting process because I have never sent so many job applications in my entire life, like dozens, maybe hundreds of applications. In Jamaica, I was, I was navigating the corporate world and I was doing all these incredible things and people would reach out to me to do projects and, and, and I felt blessed. I felt, I felt happy. And then even before I came here, like things were picking up to the point where I questioned whether or not I should be leaving Jamaica to come to Canada. And then here I was sending out dozens of applications. Nobody was responding to me. And then when I finally got the call, they were saying, oh, you don't have the Canadian experience. And then all these crazy things. So that was, that was terrible. Uh, but I, I, uh, I finally landed a job. And when I did, I had to take public transportation for three hours to get to work. I had to take a cab to the train station. <laughs> I had to take the train and then I had to take the subway. <laughs> I've been lost more times than I can remember. I, I remember even that first job one day I took, I took the subway in the wrong direction. <laughs> I took the oh. subway in the wrong direction and then I had to get off. Thank, I'm so thankful for Uber and for Lyft 
because they have kept me going. Like, I, I don't worry now about getting lost in Canada. All I know is that Uber, I have that on the phone. I have Lyft on the phone. So if I do get somewhere where I don't know where I am and I can't bother to figure it out, especially if it's cold, then I just get a cab. But that was crazy, right? But I, and even within that too, I say with, with that courage comes the support. You know, my my cousin Yahens, who should be on the call now, likes to talk about destiny helpers. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've found my destiny helpers on my journey here. Like that first job that I had, even though it was so difficult to get there, uh, and it was worse to get home because I couldn't get that train. <laughs> so I had to take like four or five buses. <laughs> I had to take like four or five buses to come back home, but that was even worse. And I remember one day I, uh, I came home and I just started to cry because I'm saying, you know, why am I doing this? I don't, I, I don't even need to be here. Understand? So that was difficult. But at work, the office had, we, I had co-workers from Brazil, Russia, uh, Colombia. A few of them spread out different places across Canada from Mexico and they were just so helpful and um what i found useful as well is that every day i was listening to reggae and dancehall music in the office they were just playing it i didn't even have to say anything to them i just went there and i heard bob marley and there was and i'm saying these people even seem to know more <laughs> of my jamaican <laughs> songs than i do so that really helped to to keep me going while i was at that job but it was was extremely difficult and you know i've been in jobs too where you had that the, the the microaggressions the things that people would say to you and you know they try to throw you under the bus whenever something went wrong i've had several of those happen as well there was a, a particular interview which I, I don't really like to speak about that really just broke my spirit because i i i went into the interview totally oblivious to the fact that okay uh i'm wearing a look that's not necessarily appreciated here uh, being in Jamaica, I would if I had gone somewhere and I'd worn uh, dreadlocks or anything looking like dreadlocks, because I, I have my natural hair still, which is definitely not dreadlocks, <laughs> but I appreciate the look. And, and uh, it was a heartbreaking experience that really woke me up again to the reality of living in Canada. So there have been several, several difficulties, but of course, because I have made that commitment, which is my third C, it's, it's ended up being more of a an adventure than that that I would like um, in many ways, and in in I have to really say thanks to all the people who have supported me along that journey. My cousin Yahens is here on the call. My my friend Sheena is here on the call. Uh, my aunt, I, I hope she's listening in. <laughs> she was trying to log in earlier, and uh, without them, I think I would have packed up and left already because. As I said, business was really picking up when I was in Jamaica. I was looking forward to doing my own, opening my own PR firm possibly. And that was going so well that it took me a while to recover, to come here. Yeah. So with, they have really helped me to keep that commitment. They would call, they would check up on me, they would send songs, they would send motivational stuff. And not just them though, I have to really give credit to my ancestors before me, that includes all the black people look like me and you and Danisha. <laughs> and then besides that, I really have such gratitude for the Jamaicans who came here and made a way for me. Like black excellence, it's, it's, as I said, it's nothing new. You know, we have made great strides over the years to fight injustice, to navigate this racist system that really tried to, tried to stifle us. But those Jamaicans who came here before me, I, I pray every day I give thanks for them because I've been in the airport and I hear reggae music playing. I hear dancehall music playing on a cold winter morning when I have to get out of bed while it's dark <laughs> to walk to the bus stop because I'm not driving <laughs> yet. <laughs> I hear dancehall music being played in a, in a car that's driving past me or I hear it on, on, the, um, on the radio while I'm in my Uber or while I'm in my lift. So I really have to give thanks to those people who came and made a way. You know, I travel all around. I see Jamaican restaurants. We're like, the coolest nation and you know all of those things so without that i think i would have packed up on this already <laughs> it does give yeah. you that sense of like you do get the little glimpses of home and that is yes. that kind of makes it feel a little bit more comforting in that you don't feel like you have to give up your culture when you're here in canada you can be and people will still embrace it because no matter what i mean i 
I would like to think that we're pretty fortunate being Jamaican because people love everything Jamaica, okay. right? <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> so it does make it a little bit easier for us. We still do have to deal with some of, you know, like you said, Kamisha, when you were looking for a place to stay, I've heard that story time and time again. Duane, yeah? I, I, like I wrote something. it down when I said I didn't realize that was an experience that every, most other people experience. So when we... Yes, we, we, we don't we, speak about it, but yes. Yeah, we, we drove over from the States to... to, to to Barry. I think we were staying in, in Brampton just to, with, with some friends. And we went to Aurelia. That's where the, the university asked about to go to. It was called Lakehead. And so we were looking in. We, I called before and I mapped out all the different apartments and we spoke to the management company. So they knew we were coming. Do you know, there was a, one of them, they said, oh, we lost the key. We can't let anybody. When they saw us, we lost the key and there's nowhere to get in and thing. And then when we said, okay, we weren't, we're not going to be able to go in. When we left, the cops intercepted us and said, there is a car fitting your description that is driving around Aurelia. And I said, hey, I thought I left this in, in the U.S., but it happened here. And, but you know, it, it worked out because we didn't, I said, I don't want to live in Aurelia anymore. <laughs> we'll stay in Barrie. That's where I am now. I, I commuted the half an hour until, you know, I was finished school there, but it was quite heartbreaking. What do you mean a car driving around Aurelia fitting our description? Mm -hmm. That was brutal. Yeah. But things yeah. work together for good, right? Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Finding organizations like I can say personally, when I first moved to Canada, I was in the GTA for a few months and then I went to Windsor because I went straight to go to school in January. And I knew nothing about like a small town life or anything like that. So it was a shock. But I immediately went and I found a West Indian association because I wanted to find people who were like me. So there was one in Windsor, thank goodness. And I started going there just to, you know, like sometimes you go on a Saturday just to be able to sit down and listen to some reggae, have some rum punch and play some dominoes and just, just talk and just be, right? And, you know, their experiences, a lot of the people who started the club, you know, they're like our grandparents' age and they had the same experiences where they're calling for apartments and the apartment is available Five minutes later, when they get there, it's not. And then they'll go back to a pay phone back in those days mm -hmm. and call again for the same number and it's available and show up again and it's ah! not, you know? So they've been uh -oh. through stuff and they would share their experiences. And, you know, we're fortunate in that with each generation, I can hope even going forward that it gets better and better because no one wants to have to fight like this for things that are easily available to others. And the others need to understand what we go through and they need to understand that sometimes even, you know, do you get the question in the workspace? I, I get it quite a bit. You know, I have never met a bunch of people who smoked weed more than like ever. And they just expect because I'm Jamaican, I smoke weed and I'm like, I have never smoked it in my life. In my life. <laughs> you know, don't just assume because I'm Jamaican, that's what I do. I mean, yeah, I will drink rum like nobody's business. But you know, like, ask me my advice. Ask me. <laughs> Don't just assume. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of these preconceived notions that they have. And, you know, they sometimes people assume a lot of negatives about us. But it's always good to meet the people who embrace all the positives. You know, they always like, you know, Jamaicans as a whole or... I'm only going to say Jamaicans because we're all Jamaicans on, on this right here. Right now. <laughs> as a whole, you know, they, they always appreciate our spirit. They appreciate how happy and kind we are. And, you know, I just feel like it's a good give and take when it comes to the culture here in Canada. We do give a lot of what we know and it's being embraced. As you said, it, Kamisha, like you go around, you see a lot of Jamaican restaurants, you hear a lot of, uh, yeah. you hear a lot of reggae everywhere you go. I mean, when we first moved where we are now, my neighbor across the street, 
every day. It's either hip hop or reggae blasting from his car. And this this little white guy who probably, <laughs> I don't even know if from. I still have never even said anything except for hi. So I have no idea anything about him, but he embrace he embraces everything, you know, and I, I can appreciate that. But it, it it is a it's a different world because yes, I still do miss Jamaica all the time. I for me the grass is greener there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting uh, that you mentioned the story about like the marijuana because the first job I had was in the cannabis industry. Uh it was a company that sells vapes. And all day long I, I was looking at marijuana pictures online and people vaping and smoking and I'm saying this is so weird because I have I don't smoke. You know, most right. of the people I'm around they don't smoke um cigarette more over marijuana. But here, like when they were counting down to legalization, uh, I think when I came when I came here it was 2018 and legalization was in October and this was around May, June. Like everybody was talking about it and there was this buzz and energy and I'm saying, but we don't feel that way about marijuana in Jamaica. Right. <laughs> So weird. <laughs> it's a totally different culture. Even now, with uh, after legalization, the, the conversations around it, it's totally different. But I think it's just because of that stereotype from whenever uh, people think that that's how we are, but that's not the reality. And yeah. then the stereotype about the Jamaican time. So I am a <laughs> I'm a stickler for time. Like I'm gonna be yeah. on time, <laughs> right? And we have a meeting. Let's meet now and. Oh, Jamaican time, man. I'm like, no, no Jamaican time. I'm, I'm on time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. I'm being on time. And I'm in, even in my corporate life, even my staff knows there are a couple things that I do not like. Don't be late and don't tell me you have you don't have what you need to do your job. Those are the two things. I cannot stand it. My mother always say, you can turn on your pot on Duenia's time. Come on. Yes. So if she said dinner's at 2.30, I'm pulling up at 2.29 and she can That's turn right. off her pot at 2.29 because I'll be seated at 2.30. That's right. That's right. right. <laughs> you never get back. Time is something that's so precious. You don't get it back. So <laughs> It's no. true. It's true. Oh my gosh, ladies. Can you believe it's already been half an hour? Um, but, you know, I thank you for sharing some of your experiences because this is the type of stuff, you know, there are a lot of goods, there's sprinkling of not so goods, but yeah. you know, this is, it's life. And I want to be able to share these kinds of things with everyone so that we know what it's like being an immigrant in Canada. And we're all very thankful to be here. Um, we are going to, I'm gonna give you guys a minute, any parting words that you'd like to say, and then we can jump off and everyone can start networking yeah. in the next set of sessions. I don't remember what time they start, uh, in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just blessed to to be here in Canada. When, when it, I was talking to my husband about the COVID and having to take the test to travel, I'm like, you know what? I have arrived in my promised land. If I don't have to travel, I don't have to travel anymore. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just kidding, but um, I love it here in Canada. The opportunities are endless. If we work hard, if we be ourselves, there is room for us here in Canada. So I love it. Perfect. Thank you. I think uh, Kimisha might have, her thing might have dropped her off, but yeah. sure she echoes the sentiments. Ah, here she is. Oh, we see you. There you are. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Right. I need to also show my earrings, and I said, "So, sister." Okay. <laughs> oh my okay. God! I understand. Look at what could have happened. Oh, word! I am so happy, but you have your parting words, and now we can see you. It's even better. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can't hear. Well, bless you, um, Kimisha. Thank you for the opportunity to be on, Dwayne. Thank you for everybody who was listening, and I'm ready to network. Yes. Okay, Kimisha. <laughs> have a good one. Bless you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs> oh, you're saying bye. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, with all the changes that we've had with since the Black Lives Matter movement and diversity and inclusion, I think I'm hoping that things will be better going forward because um, there have been a lot of changes. The, the organizations here realize that the old system and the old stereotypes, there's no room for that now. There have been major brands that have been renamed, you know, uh, and 
people are realizing more and more that not only does represent representation matter, diversity is also good for business. So that's something that needs to be embraced. I mean, Canada is really a melting pot of cultures for so many different people and so many different nations. So it really does not make sense to be bringing in immigrants and then everybody's going to discriminate against them. And it's systemic. So th there's a problem where that is concerned. So I'm hoping that for this year and going forward, that we can see the changes and then we can feel more appreciated and welcome to be a part of this amazing country because what's the sense of you know bringing in people if you're not going to be accommodating so it's it's good to be here um i'm really looking forward to new things to a paradigm shift where all of this is concerned and i think you mentioned earlier about the differences uh, regarding black people uh, but then I remember I spoke to this woman. She was telling me that when she came here, maybe 20 something years ago, uh, they would go on the bus and people just get up. They would go into the shopping mall and into the food court and they would sit down and everybody would leave. And nobody would want to look at them to acknowledge your presence and to know that I'm here in this age, in this era. And uh, so much has changed. Like I go into the place, they welcome me. I get good, proper first world customer service. And even when, you know, if you're in the workplace, things might be a little different in terms of the microaggression and stuff like that. It's a huge change. Okay. So okay. I'm hoping that with all that has happened since the Black Lives Matter protest, all that has been discussed about diversity and inclusion, that ten years, five years from now, 10 years from now, people coming into the country will not be having the same discussions that we're having today. Because if we're really serious about that as a, mm -hmm. as a country in terms of Canada, then a lot of things have to change. And I hope and pray <laughs> that they will change. And then we will have that difference going forward. Well said, well said. So hopefully everyone is going to be a part of that change because it's also up to us to speak up when we see all these injustices happening. And nowadays people are ready to listen. So definitely speak your mind, people. All right. So our next sessions will start in about 10 minutes. I'm going to go network. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.